Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome. Welcome to another of our to another um, webinar from AJPM. I'm Andrea. So today we're gonna see we're gonna go through the COT report and uh, how important it, it is for investors and traders and how you can use it. Just let me double check uh, our Zoom and go to webinar settings. It seems fine. It seems that it's capturing both sound and uh, screen as well. Perfect. COT is fine. And let me double check. So, from uh, guys, if you, it will, I will really appreciate any um, uh, feedback in regards to the audio and whether you can see the screen as well. As usual, I'm, I, I, we ask you for a feedback just to make sure that everything is fine. So, until I got your feedback, I'm gonna uh, go through the disclaimer warning before we see together what we're gonna cover precisely today. I would like to remind you that this. Um, uh, webinar is recorded, so you're gonna receive at the end of the webinar or the uh, or by tomorrow the latest a recording in your email, uh, along with a podcast podcast version and a, a recorded version and a YouTube version as well. So yeah, uh, audio good, screen good, and Andrea forgot to upload the Zoom the um, PDF version. I will do it right now. Okay. And in a second, you're gonna have the handout section, the PDF version of this webinar as well. Um, Perfect. So in the handout section, you can find also the PDF version, guys. Okay, thank you guys for uh, giving, me, giving me a feedback. So we are good to go. So this material is provided general marketing communication uh, for information purposes only and does not constitute any dependent investment research. Nothing in this communication content should be con considered as containing, sorry, an investment advice or an investment recommendation or a solicitation for the purpose of buying or selling of any financial instrument. All information provided is gathered from reputable sources and any information containing indication of past performance is not a guarantee or reliable indicator of future performance. Users acknowledge that any investment in leveraged products is characterized by a certain degree of uncertainty and that any investment of this nature involves a high level of risk for which the user is solely responsible and liable. We assume no liability for any loss arising from any investment made based on the information provided in this communication. This communication must not be reproduced or further distributed without our prior written permission. A risk warning, trading leveraged products such as Forex and derivatives may not be suitable for investors as they carry a high degree of risk to your capital. Please ensure that you fully understand the risks involved, take into account your investments of objectives and level of experience before trading, and if necessary, seek independent advice. Please read the full risk disclosure. So, admin is out of the way. So we are good to go. Let me just. Okay. Anything you need, we you gonna you can contact us via email on the webinars at hfm.com as usual. We will reply to any questions that you have. I'll skip myself. And I'll go straight to what we're gonna cover today. So today we're gonna see what the COT report is, which stands for commitment of traders. Why it is uh, important, okay? Uh, and how you can read it, understand what it presents, and use this data to aid your trading, okay? So. And of course, you can ask anything you need, anything you want, anything that you don't understand throughout the, um, during the webinar or at the end of the webinar as usual. Come on. Okay, 
firstly a bit of an intro, a bit of a theoretical, the, the theory of this uh, topic on what it is, why, what it stands for, uh, and etc. So, firstly, um, what it is, okay, it stands for commitment of traders. So, what, what that commitment of traders means, first of all, is uh, is an is um, is a report, okay, uh, uh, which is published on a weekly basis from the Commodity Futures Trading Commission in US, okay, American Commodity uh, Commodity, and I have used I have put the link on so you can find it. It's a report posted. Friday at 8.30 GMT by the, every Friday by Futures Trading Commission. Uh, and what it is, actually this report, report um, oversees, let's say, or uh, if you prefer, it, it presents the total positions held on the previous Tuesday by all participants in the US future markets. So basically with this report, um, through this report, the, the CFTC, so the Commitment Futures Trading Commission, ensures that the future markets perform two import, important uh, fact, functions, pricing in the commodity sections and reducing price risk in the futures and option markets. I, I will explain um, what I mean, okay? Just bear with me. So just as a conclusion, okay? It's a report, um, a, a snapshot if you prefer, on how the market participants all the market participants in the U.S. futures, uh, where they are placed, what, what, what kind of positions they have, they are holding into the market, okay? So it, that's why it's called commitment of traders. It spots, is presenting the commitment of the classified trading groups as of Tuesday, the same week. So why this uh, report is important. It's important because it provides to investors or traders uh, in general to the market participant an up-to-date information on future markets operations and increases the uh, transparency of these uh, exchanges. Okay, so it's like it, it used, okay, it's, it's since it's every week, uh, it's not like something that is useful for, let's say, scalpers or, uh, or traders that like that trading in a minute or 15 minutes, 30 minutes, and et cetera. Uh, it's, it's, it is mainly used by many future traders as a market signal on what, uh, on which to trade, on, on what they, uh, on, on, what uh, kind of asset they could trade and uh, in which direction. Um, um, and also it helps um, traders as well to use this report and determine whether they should take a short or long position in their trades. But as I said, this is relevant for um, medium and long-term traders. Okay, that implies to uh, uh, daily, weekly, uh, monthly, and yearly uh, uh, time frames. And if it's used from intraday traders, that should be um, in regard to uh, participate in the same uh, direction as the uh, existing trend. So it can help in intraday traders as well, but um, uh, uh, for uh, trend traders mainly. Okay, so, so as I said, um, okay, can you share the link on the chat? Yes, I can, of course. Um, give me a second. Send to, yeah, this is the link.
Okay, so let's move on. So how it works? Basically, uh, okay, well, okay, let me get the bit on, go, okay. I can't, uh, I lost my slide. Okay, here we are. First of all, let's see um, how the, the COT works before we go through the, uh, before we see an example and, um, and uh, explain the three uh, groups that, um, the, the three participant, market participant groups that are listed in that report and what they uh, present. Okay, first of all, let's uh, let me uh, take a bit of uh, the history of this report in order to make you understand what it actually shows. So, just very, very briefly, guys, it's a very, very, very old, quite old report. I mean, something that it started uh, back in 19, 1924. You're welcome, uh, Joseph. Um, so, um, it used to be an annual report, okay, an annual report presenting and outlying hedging and speculation activities in the future market in the uh, US, okay. However, afterwards, it changed to monthly after uh, in, around 1962, it, it, it changed into a monthly one. And nowadays, uh, it has moved to a weekly. So every Friday night, as I said. Uh, so as I already mentioned, the information that is included is compliant on Tuesday, right? And verified on Wednesday and released every Friday, Friday, Friday night. So basically this report uh, is a visualized uh, graph, okay, of the uh, market participants uh, positioning, let's say. So it shows, it helps, uh, it can help the people to understand the dynamics of the market. This is the intention. Uh, according to the, uh, who is, okay, thank, okay. Uh, according to the uh, CFTC, to the Trading Commission, Commission, uh, each Tuesday's open interest of futures and options on future markets in which 20 or more traders hold position equal to or above the reporting levels established by the CFT. What do I mean by that? Basically, okay, by uh, taking into consideration um, the uh, um, I lost my words <laughs> by examining uh, the uh, the Tuesdays up to Tuesdays result and verifying on Wednesday we have on every Friday uh, the um, the interest that there is in the market so a lot of as I said a lot of traders are using it in order to uh, take a decision whether they will go along with the trend or along with the majority of the market participants based on this report. So this pre pre report is pretty much uh, presenting what, uh, the, what, what type of positioning uh, the commercial participants have taken, what kind of uh, type of positioning the non-commercial traders have taken, and what the non-reportable traders have taken. So based on the uh, on this, okay, and where the, the majority of them, okay, uh, what kind of position they decided to take in for a particular market, you can uh, decide, you can determine what kind of position you can take on your own trades as well. One thing that report does not do is categorize individual traders' positions, okay? This is... Uh, uh, because it's a part of uh, confidential business practices and, 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 and so on and so forth. Um, so, um, what else? There are, there are uh, some strengths about this, uh, this report, but there are also some 
uh, uh, weakness. One of the biggest strengths is that uh, um, that it is it is a core data source for investors, for traders, uh, for most of academic research on pricing trends in the market, and etc. The one of the weakness of the COT is that um, the 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 biggest weakness, let's say, for the COT is is that for a, a document meant to be uh, to to promote transparency, the the rules governing is it, it, governing it are not uh, considered as transparent. That's the uh, one of the biggest uh, weakness. For example, what I mean by that, for example, um, there are three uh, three groups uh, in that report. Okay, commercial, not commercial, not reportable. Uh, so traders are classified as non-commercial or commercial. And that holds for every position. I mean, uh, by the way, again, I repeat, this is for the US, okay? So they are classified as non-commercial and uh, commercial. Now we'll just move on to the next slide as well, which is something that you, if you have used the link that I had just uh, presented, is something that you will find also there as well. Uh, so. Um, so, as I said, the, the, the report presents non-commercial, commercial as well, okay, uh, traders, and, and presents every position that they have, they are holding for a particular uh, asset, commodity, and etc. This means that, uh, for example, if there is a, an oil company, Okay, I'll come to you in a second, uh, Prince and Ponky Goss. Okay, let me finish what I'm saying. So uh, let's assume that we have an oil company with a small uh, hedge and a much larger speculative trade on oil uh, with both commissions, with sorry, both uh, positions show up in the commercial category. So, so uh, this is the issue with the class, with the, the separation that the report is doing with non-commercial and commercial. If we have, for example, as I said, the, this oil company with a small hedge and a, a much larger, larger speculative trade on uh, oil, both commission will be catch up and shown in the commercial category in the COT report. That's the uh, consideration that we might need to uh, have in mind when we are using COT. Um, uh, so there are these limitations, but most of the uh, market participants out there agree that uh, even the questionable data of the COT is better than nothing, <laughs> okay? So, um, so, 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 let me get back to your questions. Uh, can you please make sure you explain the gold COT report as you proceeded with the lessons? I will try, what are the times to play and it's okay. Okay, so uh, you ask gold, so I need to find it. If you have already, if you have already have, have it open, uh, Prince, please send it to me just to catch up a bit to to be ready when uh, is the time to explain it. Um, mm, 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 uh, so in the uh, let me just. This is, once you use my link, link, guys, it will redirect you to this website, okay, where there is an, an introduction and a, an explanation of the methodology that the commission is using in order to report, to, to, to um, uh, prepare uh, this report every week and what is taken into consideration, uh, what kind of uh, firms also. So I forgot to mention that it includes 
uh, it includes this, all these data are uh, composed by, based on the reporting that the CFTC had from uh, uh, several firms. So clearing members, foreign brokers, exchanges, and etc. So it's, it's, it's uh, based on the position data uh, as supplied by these reporting firms. Um, what else is important over here? Um, nothing. So you will, you, this is what you will be able to see. And if you scroll down, oops, you will be able to see uh, these as well. Okay, uh, which is, this is an old example, but let me just share my screen. Uh, can you see that? Yeah, so here it is. Current, so you're gonna see you're gonna see the the uh, the monthly one, the monthly uh, uh, report. You're gonna see the current trades in financial re uh, future reports, uh, the legacy report uh, as well. So I need to firstly uh, clarify what we mean. This aggregate report, financial future current traders in financial future report, and legacy report. So let's do that right now, okay? Let's do that. Uh, I'm not sure do I have it over here. Let me double check. No, I don't. So let's quickly go through, um, yes, the, the, the difference between these three reports uh, that uh, we had over here. Just let me go back. Okay. Um, I gave you the link on how to find it. Uh, let's go through though. Uh, sorry, just give me a second. Let's very briefly explain what these three different uh, types are. So first of all, let's start from the bottom, okay? From the legacy one. You can see over here a little table uh, with uh, the exchange, uh, the exchange uh, centers, right? Uh, futures only, future and options combined, long, short, format, and a supplement commentary index called CIT report. So what it is, okay? Let's Let's start with legacy. Legacy commit all of three types are commitment of trader reports, first of all. Okay, they are all three are commitment of traders report. So let's start with the legacy. The legacy commitment of traders report is the one uh, in which the traders are most familiar. It, pr basically, it overviews on what the key market participants think and, and, and helps determine the likelihood of a trend uh, to follow or to, to continue or to end up or whether they, it's nearly uh, um, um, to its end, right? So uh, if, uh, let me open one, uh, let's do the Chicago Board of Trade one. And we see this. I know that it looks a bit messy. It looks, you say, oh, I cannot be bothered, etc. It's a, it's a matter to understand, to comprehend all this information and to be able uh, to read it, uh, okay? So over here, what we are seeing, we are seeing in the Chicago Board of Trade uh, for the wheat, the, the very first table is for the wheat, okay? Uh, the monthly, a commitment of traders report. Okay, so pretty much what this shows uh, is uh, the interest of non-commercial and commercial uh, positions, uh, uh, traders, what kind of trade they have, long or short. And if we see both these, group, these groups, uh, sorry, growing, uh, then it means that the majority, I'm not sure whether I can say that, but that the majority is on the same side of the uh, market. So let's say long, okay, we're seeing both uh, increasing. Um, if the both groups, commercial, non-commercial, uh, long position to increase, that's, it's a bullish signal 
uh, for the price of the underlying com uh, commodity. In this case, is wheat. Okay, so we see the long position. So you see, non-commercial, long, short spreading, commercial, long, short, and then we have a total. What you have to check first of all is, um, let's say, let's check the long uh, column. Okay, if we see them both, non-commercial long commercial long growing growing okay uh, then that's a bullish signal for wheat if we see long po uh, short position in both growing okay then it's a bearish signal it means that we have an a trend that is still on and and uh, and since this these two major market part major market participant groups are increasing, it means that there is further steam. Uh, so obviously you need to combine this with your technical analysis. I mean, I, I am taking for granted that you will uh, go and check your wheat. Okay, obviously uh, we don't have wheat, but we have gold, oil, uh, cotton, uh, copper, palladium, palladium, we have a lot of commodities in, in, in um, uh, der uh, as derivatives uh, that you can trade. Uh, but what I'm trying to say is that obviously you're going to check your charts. You're going to see in a daily and weekly chart whether you have spotted a trend and whether there is time for you to participate. So now, uh, so over here, uh, so 89.996 for the long, short are way higher, 130. It used to be lower, 109. So obviously there is an increase over here. Let's see the commercial. The commercial, the long is higher, but there is a growing also in, 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 in the short position. So uh, even though in the commercials, the long, uh, uh, position is bigger than the short. However, uh, what is in, what is important over here is that we are seeing a growing short in commercial and a growing short in non-commercial as well. So what that means? It means that in the long term, uh, there is there is a, a short trend apparently. While in the near term, the fact that uh, there is a significant rise in the long for commercial, it shows that there might be some kind of a, a near term correction or something. But the, what overall I can take from this report is that the overall trend is still uh, uh, down. The overall momentum is still for a short position and that is expected to last if I consider the rise that I have seen in both non-commercial and commercial groups in the short position. Okay. Um, number of trades in each category. Okay, they are very, very, uh, there is not a significant increase. Percentage of interest uh, over here presented by each category of trader, 88, 89, 20, sorry, 22, 26, 31, 38, 48, 37, 39, 25. Okay. Um, so it looks like the percentage wise, uh, there is, a, there is a, a bit of, the interest has been lost a bit uh, from non-commercials, but the commercial are, uh, how it shows a rise, okay. Um, so we just, uh, corn, oats, soybeans, soybeans. Um, let me find something that we can combine with, we have the 10 year note as well. I would like to check gold as, um, as my friend asked, Down Jones, or oh, let's do Down Jones, why not? Uh, Down Jones, pretty stable, pretty stable, pretty stable, pretty stable, not interesting. Uh, 
Uh, let's do Chicago, da, 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 da. no Dow Jones Mini. Uh, give me, okay, I'm gonna use something else so we can see that in practice. This is what I would like to do. So there's a combined position over here uh, in options and futures. So let's see the Dow Jones over here. Uh, yeah, you cannot see though, over here, you cannot see the old and the new. So you cannot see whether there is an, there was an increase or decrease. Uh, uh, there is a change uh, a week ago. You can see the change from a week ago. Uh, number of trades so you okay you can pay so you can see that the interest for short traders non-commercial has detected because it's negative uh, the commercial the interest has increased so these are not coming along the thing that comes along is the long position because it's uh, based on a week before the report so that's the change in a weekly basis so that's that that explains what I said earlier guys uh, that sometimes you can see that if both commercial and not commercial are both rising, okay, but in the long, the one is rising and the other one is detecting, that means that some near-term correction might, uh, might happening. So you, what you can do in this, in this um, case is go to your chart and start from monthly and weekly basis to see the overall trend and they'll go down to daily to see that whether there was any near term correction okay so just before we actually find examples etc okay um by the way um uh, just to because we started this by because I wanted to explain what each of this category um, of these um, report, three reports are because there are three three types of COT reports: legacy, supplemental, and disaggregate. Okay, uh, so legacy, the one that we are seeing here, is the ones that uh, you it might be the one that you are using the most. Okay, uh, and it just shows. Uh, the market for a commodity trader broken into long, short, and spread position for non-commercial traders and commercial traders, and not reportable position for small traders like you. So the total interest is given as well as changes in open interest, right? We said so it gives you an overview of whether uh, to determine the likelihood of a trend continuation or uh, coming to an end of a trend. Uh, so you need to have in mind the very first thing that you need to check is to check uh, whether uh, the long position or the short position for commercial and non-commercial are growing together because this will give you the very first signal uh, for the commodity, we, whether we have a bullish signal or a um, bearish signal. Um, okay, that's just we're gonna see later on. Okay, I want to go through the theory first of all. Also, supplemental commodity uh, report CIT, otherwise, is this one. This one is like uh, it contains the first report that we see the legacy, it contained only a futures one. This one contains. Uh, both options and future positions. So this report shows a breakdown of open interest position. So open interest position, okay, uh, in three different categories. Again, commercial, not conventional index traders, but including options, not only futures. Okay, uh, again, with the corn, um, so, so you can combine the two reports, legacy and supplement just for confirmation. Another one, disaggregate, the one that it was in the very 
top this one in the meantime of okay. left disaggregate so let's open oil one here it is disaggregate for it's natural gas um, Chicago I see futures let me just double check over here natural gas metals and now there's petroleum sorry I'm confused a bit let me open it again metals let's start with metals we have palladium okay let's do that okay so I have opened both in metals, the long format and the short format, okay? I haven't opened the options and futures. I will do it in a second. Let's do it together. First of all, is palladium. Okay, what is disaggregate CO2 report first? Um, it's another CO2 report. Again, it's something that's widely used by traders. So the important ones, guys, is this one, the disaggregated one, and the legacy, okay? So, the disaggregate might consider be a better one just because it's, it has a deeper breakdown. Nothing more than that. So, why, what I mean deeper breakdown, you can see that we don't see only as, um, uh, commercials and non-commercials. We are seeing an actual breakdown. We are seeing producers, merchants, uh, possession users, we are seeing swap dealers, we can see management uh, manage money ones, other reportables, non reportable positions, okay? So we are seeing a, a wider uh, categorized, uh, let's say, um, breakdown of the market participants. So they are not split into commercial, not potential, super commercial. The commercial are split into Producers, merchants, users, processors, and swap traders. Okay, and the uh, non-commercial split into um, uh, manage money and other reportables. And we have a, uh, another category called non-reportable positions. So this is meant um, um, this is this is this is meant to provide a clear position, a clear picture to you on what the people uh, um, per group, uh, their actual their actual positioning per group, and not like summarize of it. Okay, for me, it's not necessary because I want at the end I want to want. I want to know the total, not to know what the swap traders are doing, what the people manage money to are doing, what the producers are doing. I want to see in total. Uh, but that, that's an extra info, right? Um, so, what this uh, report, uh, how this report, this disaggregate can be used. Uh, as I said, it provides a breakdown of the Tuesday's open interest of futures and options. By the way, the in this uh, table over here, this formation has options and futures. Oh, sorry, back. And in the okay here, it was the palladium disaggregate uh, futures only. Uh, over here we have disaggregate. Uh, comb uh, for all futures combined positions are of January 31. So this is like a summary, okay? Um, and we can see what can we can derive uh, from this report is that let's take for uh, Palladium for example, we have a steady long position from the first category, the producers and merchants, uh, there is no rise, there is no, no increase uh, over here, and swap dealers the same. Uh, so very, very steady for all of them actually. So let's uh, have a look on the changes in the commitments form. There was a change here, 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 positive and negative change in the swap dealers short, so that means that 
the swap dealers change from short to long, 170 of them change. So like a sh they shift into the long position. Um, there was a significant interest spike in the change for managed money short, but the change is a less, a minor change in the long position. Um, ba, 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 what else positive? So, so the fact that they are all positive except the swap dealer short and the long uh, position manage money, it presents that um, in general, uh, they have added to the existing positions other than change completely. So I need to check also the disaggregate one for Palladium to understand the uh, whether they are, uh, uh, so this is the summary of it, okay? Long, uh, da, 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 da. Let me just check also the futures and options, whether they agree with this steady, uh, uh, improve with this steadiness, and they do. Okay, one. Just give me a second. So I want you to, I can, let's go through. Is it the same as below? Yes, it is, okay. So let's take it one by one, guys. And now we, I want to show Palladium as well over here in the chart. Uh, where's my Palladium, Palladium, Palladium? Okay, let me take it in, drop it, drag and drop it. Guys, uh, I will be honest with you. It's not something, it's not easy, okay? It's not easy. It's something that uh, it needs very careful to for, carefully for you to uh, read it, understand it over the weekend. That's why it's posted every Friday night. So you can read it uh, and try to uh, understand what it reports throughout the weekend for taking any medium and long-term position, okay? It's not easy, it's not for scalpers, it's not uh, really for intraday traders, okay? And it requires a very, very good understanding. This is mainly used for investors and long and medium-term traders. It's not easy, but I'm obliged to present it and to show how it, uh, how it, um, it can be used, okay? Uh, and that's why I'm doing this um, uh, this uh, webinar. Okay, so let's get back. I have put the weekly palladium on, okay? And I want to zoom in a bit to see the January, uh, um, uh, the January performance, okay? January, it was in January because we had the monthly January report. So January started over here with a gap down. Okay, and since then is keep moving in a downtrend. So it, the end of January, it, it, it closed lower. And why I mentioned that? Because I want to go back to our um, report to analyze what the data are, um, uh, are saying over here. We have opened the disaggregate number, the disaggregate, actually, we'll do the disaggregate, okay, one by one. We have opened the disaggregate futures only one. I will open the disaggregate, actually, short form, short form. Uh, I will open the disaggregate short format and the disaggregate options and futures short format. And I will go down to the current legacy as well and open. Chicago Merchile uh, is the biggest one I want, along with New York. I will open the Chicago one, short futures only. Okay, uh, here it is. And let's do the assessing together. Okay, I have put as the first one, the disaggregate one. Okay, 
a short format and the uh, legacy one short format again okay both futures only and etc so let's do step one let's read what the is telling us okay let's start with the legacy so commitment short long spread short long spread uh, we had a minor change uh, 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 from the long but a significant increase to the short another very important increase on the long in commercial and a less uh, less of uh, interest uh, for the short position so what we are taking over here is that what is moving along in the same direction is the short positions because look at that in the non-commercial 980 increase commercial short 16100 increase but the long position in both non-commercial and non-commercial are opposed so they are not growing together what grows together is a short position so that comes in line with my downturn okay so very first thing the very first outcome is that we are seeing both non-commercial and commercial increasing together in the short contracts let's open the long contracts as well i chose chicago because it's one of the biggest uh, ones right Sorry, I'm confused what I have open. It's a cricket. I need to close everything and open it again because I'm confused. We started with legacy, right? Yes, we started with legacy, Chicago short, and let's start the long as well. We derive that there is a big growing interest in the short positions for commercial and non-commercials. Now I'm gonna open the long one. Uh, the long one. In the long one, we don't have palladium, so it's not in the long uh, in the long um, format. So that strengthens our bearish signal. So I will close the long one, okay? Since it's not in this report, instead in this report is the Malaysia crude palm, which we are not interested. So let's skip that. Let's keep the short format that we were uh, checking earlier. Oh. Sorry, give me a second. Perfect. One, one. Okay, okay. Chicago merchandise. Oh my God, I opened so many that I'm confused. Sorry, really sorry. Really sorry about that. Just confused. What we were checking today. Ah, yes, this is where we had. I'm just. Buttermilk, Euro, Euro effect, Japan. This is the Chicago one. Sorry, I should have stick with. Yes, I should have in a separate report, in a separate Google the metals in a separate google that segregate with the legacy because this is getting confusing right it is getting a bit confusing but list interest
And yes, I did it wrong because before I was checking the interest for Malaysian crude instead of palladium. Really, really sorry for that, guys. Let's let's go back to the palladium that we were checking earlier. Okay, so yes, let's take it step by step because otherwise I'm getting confused. Getting confused. We open the metals long and short futures only. Let's go down and open the uh, leg and see as well. Okay. <clears throat> long, short. Uh, let's long, short, long, short. US, US, we have futures, but we're going to see futures in a second. Okay, okay. Okay, this is not included. Palladium is not included over here. This is VIX, VIX futures, silver, copper, gold, cobalt, aluminium. And still, we're going to use this because someone asked about gold. So we need to check later on the gold. So we'll put it first. Uh, we don't want Malaysia. This one goes here because someone asked about gold. Cotton, coffee, dollar index. Let's see it later on. Uh, cotton, that's good. Okay, we don't need this either. We don't want this either. What else is left? Nothing. Okay, perfect, 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 perfect. Okay. Ah, as I said, okay. Okay. So, this is a breakdown, okay, uh, for palladium. Uh, over here, the, the disaggregate one with all futures. I want also to see the disaggregate uh, for, op for, this, uh, for options and uh, futures, not on, only futures, to see whether they agree. So let's come. So we have all the breakdown over here. What we can see is that they are all growing, except the this uh, this disagreement between long and short between swap dealers and management ones, but all the rest groups, all the rest market participants, either long or short, we are seeing a positive increase. But the major the major the major increase is on the long positions. Okay, with swaps, 46% interest in long. Um, producers, 16% interest in long. Uh, a, a very a big change uh, interest in short, but without a significant 44% uh, increase in short by money, money manage, manage money only. So two out of uh, four, sorry, three out of four are on the long side of the trade. Okay, in regards to palladium. So the ones that they keep holding an increasing interest for the short is the manage money uh, subcategory. Okay, all the rest, they show a growing interest for a long position. And uh, more precisely, so the swap dealers are 46%. Okay. So this is 21 out of 127 total trades, while the 44% is 37 out of, uh, of uh, those that they were in the managed money. So what we are seeing, we are seeing some near term uh, uh, correction to the upside to a long position, while there is a still a downtrend going on. So let's get back, you see? Palladium, one, two days, but let's see the weekly one. But the weekly, so, and downwards, in that the downwards interest is still on. And this come uh, in line with the, uh, with the overall um, increase in the short position for managed money, but, all the rest, the interest for long position, the, the peak that we've seen is swap dealers and producers and um, 
other reportables, the, the um, interest for long uh, is coming in contrast with the overall trend. So what that tell us, it tells us that um, this is not, there is some change in the interest, but it's not coming in along with, it's not uh, in, in, agree, in an agreement with the existing downtrend. So it's something that you should ignore. So let's move on to the next. Let's do gold. Okay, so I have the disaggregate gold report over here. I have the, let's find gold over here as well. The disaggregate futures only report. And I have the legacy gold over here as well. Okay, let's start. Legacy. Gold, legacy, futures only. I will put that list. Gold commodity community traders futures only for Chicago uh, legacy one. So what do we have? Uh, uh, ba -bam -bam. A lot of interest from the non-commercial for long position, less for the short. Uh, commercial 120, but a lot of them the double, more than double in commercial short. So let's ch check the changes from a week ago, okay, the change from a week ago. 3K for long non-commercial uh, and a big, big detection, uh, similar detection for long and short in the commercial part. So changes up to 7K, uh, they have dropped their interest from commercials in both directions, right? While in the non-commercial, the interest remains for the long position. So there is a 54% uh, change to the upside for long uh, co non-commercial and a 24 for uh, long commercial one. So what we have over here, both long and short increasing in non-commercial and commercial. Can you see guys? 54% for long and 25 for long commercial, 20% growth in short non-commercial, 63% uh, commercial short. So everything is, is growing together. That means indecision. Let's get back to our gold chart. Steadiness, it means steadiness, it means neutral outlook, not a particular strong trend, and etc. So let's see. Let's find out together. Gold. Perfect. Let's zoom in. This is the actually. This is, uh, where is my one, two, January. We want January performance. Weekly chart, let me zoom in a bit. January started, come on, here and end up here. So it opened in January at 127 and close dogely just slightly at 140, around $40 higher. So it had a swing up and then turn very close to the open price. So that explains why we have seen growing both long and short positions, okay? We have seen growing in January, both short and long positions. So let's get back to our uh, to our uh, breakdown over here. So these were, this is the general outcome. Let's focus, however, on the change that we have seen the last week. We have a significant change, uh, a higher change for the short position, a higher um, 
detection, see, and, and in, uh, a higher level of detection from short positions instead of long. These are the total. So 27K for short and 24K for long. So it means that the short interest it is higher. Okay, is higher. Uh, Non-reportable positions, uh, the change is in the long one than the short one, the biggest change. So let's get the disaggregate commitments to, to help us uh, find out what's going on uh, over there. So positive change, negative change, positive, negative. So one, two, one, two, one, two. growing. Uh, both. So there is a coordinated, as you can see, uh, a coordinated increase in the long contracts uh, in a week. So that particular week, there was an increase in the interest, uh, in the bullish interest for gold. Okay, but uh, as I said earlier, guys, that the fact that the, the total reportable positions for the short in the short breakdown was higher than the long, it just comes in line with the overall uh, pressure in the gold. And the change that we have seen over here in the changing commitment for a week just presents that there was a lot of uh, uncertainty, a lot of um, uh, indecision in the market, and that uh, has caused some uh, limited swings higher. Okay, so it wasn't the best example, but uh, why not? Okay, let's do a forex one. That might be clear. Okay, that might be much clearer. So I'm closing everything. Okay, and I'm going down to open the financials and to open the long and short format of Chicago. Okay, uh, we have the very first in the uh, futures only is Canadian dollar, the current one. In the uh, Canadian dollar, Canadian dollar, this combines all option futures as well. And I want to see Canadian dollar in the uh, Chicago in the legacy report. And Canadian dollar, where is it? Where is it? Let's start with the Canadian dollar. We just search it. Yes, here it is. Okay, let's do Canadian dollar. And let's open the dollar cut as well. Sometimes, if like the gold one, that it was a bit confusing, uh, the results were um, opposed to the overall trend and etc. You just you can just ignore it and move on to the next signal, okay? Well, one, you need to find the asset based on the COT that clearly presents a growing interesting interest uh, in uh, long for all the market participants or a clear uh, increasing interest for a short position in all the market participant bank groups, both non-commercial and commercial, okay? You need to have, find a clear um, um, uh, signal. If not, just move on to the next one. Okay, so, okay, uh, Canadian dollar. We said Canadian dollar. Let's zoom in. Well, this is where we're standing. It used to be in a descending triangle. And the past um, few days, actually two weeks, nearly two weeks, is in, uh, it has seen an upswing. But overall, it, as we can see, it was in a, uh, it poses some lower uh, highs in a descending triangle. This is what I can see from my daily chart in uh, dollar cat. In dollar cat. So what that means? It means a uh, that Canadian dollar 
um, is, is, is seeing some uh, buying um, interest against uh, the US dollar uh, in the one, two, three, four, five, the, in the last five months, but the last two weeks, so here, we are seeing that Canadian dollar is losing uh, some ground against US dollar. This is what it means. Let's see the what the legacy and the disaggregated uh, reports have to say, uh, what they are uh, presenting. Okay, so let's see the breakdown to non-commercial and commercial. We are seeing that <clears throat> there is a growing interest, so 80% higher, 80% higher uh, long position, 40% higher for short position, and uh, commercials are 55% higher and 35% for the short ones. So, okay, very, very equal. Very, very equal. So with the total, both long and short uh, are quite similar. So let's see whether the breakout of the comments over here, commercial, non-commercial, a change around 18% uh, non-commercial for so the same data. So the change, a significant change can be seen in the show position for commercial, a significant increase, okay, significant increase. Uh, yes, so the change that we have seen is that a lot of interest has been seen for shortening or selling the Canadian dollar and that is coming in line, you see, for the uh, as for 24th of January. So let's zoom in and see what's going on. And indeed, if I check the two, the week, that week, the week, um, um, let me see, is this one, the last week of January and the week follow, okay, that, 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 that one, 21st, let me just, 22, 20, okay, come on, Monday, 23rd, 20, as of 24th, so indeed, can you see this swing, so this swing, because these reports are as per Tuesday's closing. So indeed, Tuesday, that means, come on, sorry. So 17, 24, and 31st. So that was the change from the two, as of 24th. So as of 24th, indeed, that records the performance uh, for the previous week. So it records the performance from this week over here, 16 to 20th, and the 16 to 20th, we have seen a selling of uh, dollar cut. It comes in line with this report over here in which we have a the, the, the biggest interest to be on the short side for commercials. And in the total, if you see the total as well, there is a higher interest for short positioning rather than long positioning. Okay, and that it comes in line with the um, uh, trend that we have seen with the uh, sell of that we have seen in our charts. Okay, so let's move on to two, two, two. Let's see together. Let's do another example as well. Swiss, Japan, EuroFX. There is Euro Pound over here. Okay, let's do Euro Pound. Let's do something different. Euro Pound. Euro Pound. Let's zoom in. Here we are. Euro Pound. In January, we have seen. Let me find the beginning of January. So 
we can have a complete. Here we are. So we started here and so until the twenty the the week the third week is seen a decline. You see that? It's seen a decline and until the third week of December, while the final week the last two final weeks actually. So here we are, we see a slight rebound. So why I'm showing all this, let me just zoom in. So let's study now what the reports were telling us, were presenting to us. Okay, let's get back. Euro pound, Euro pound daily, okay. So, over here, do I have also the, 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 not that one, I will the non-commercial, commercial for Euro pound, Euro pound, Euro pound, Euro pound, here it is, okay. I have the breakdown over here to commercial, not commercial, and here I have all the market participants. So the aggregated, the elegancy, what well, disaggregated and the elegancy, let's start with the elegancy as usual. So a small change in long position, a bigger change in the short position for the non-commercial, and another big change. The big, so a lot of ch the, the biggest changes have been done in short positioning for both non-commercial and commercial, okay? The total ones, if I sum commercial and non-commercial, presents that 10 times more, there was, 10 times more interest uh, seen um, change of commitment uh, seen for short position the uh, week uh, the week uh, January 24th so the last the last um, uh, the last two uh, a week and a half the final two uh, the, the final week let's say of January so the final week of January, we had a, an increased interest for the short position in Euro pound, while uh, the overall um, uh, the overall interest for uh, for a Euro pound as of January 31st is let me check is again on the short position with 92% against the 57 for the long position. So 58 short uh, commercial, 32 short non-commercial, while 20 and 35 stands for long. So there is, what that explains guys, that shows that if I zoom out, I should see, uh, <clears throat> if I zoom out, I will see Actually, what that shows is that the, in the long term, there is a bearish uh, bias uh, dominates for Euro pound, okay? For Euro pound. While the, um, the, the fact that we have seen some, um, uh, uh, some intraday, have I, Side by side. Okay, here we are. So, and, 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 okay, this is what was going on in January. Okay, so what the, the report in January says that there is more interest in the long term for a short position. Okay. That means that there is a lot of pressure, downwards pressure in Euro pound. While the change in interest the last few days of uh, the week present that there might be some correction going on in the long uh, position. And that comes, that explains this swing higher that we have seen initially in the final, in the final, um, 
uh, in the final um, sorry in the final uh, few days of the uh, of the um, of January. However, overall, even though it had this jump higher, overall the report is saying that the long term is still pointing to the downside. So this might be an alert that despite this, let me zoom out and put the weekly chart on, that despite this latest swing higher in January, overall there is a pressure on euro pound indicating that at some point uh, we might see the asset starting a new trend to the downside. Okay, so this is an alert which doesn't uh, require the immediate action, but the fact that we have a, an increase uh, of interest by 92% for euro pound in the short position is just for you to put it down right now that a, a, a note to check euro pound in a weekly basis until you figure out uh, until you spot any technical signal that uh, uh, suggests that a new downtrend long-term downtrend has started okay because this is a sign that the existing uh, sideways movement if you prefer or uh, uh, limited swings higher might run out of steam sooner uh, soon uh, or sooner than expected let's do the euro dollar as well And da, 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 nothing interesting. 95 against 91 percent increase. So everything is moving. Um, there is a lot of confusion and neutral zone. No, no, no. So let's check something else. Okay, Bitcoin. Bitcoin for Chicago Exchange. 79 percent increase of interest for a short positioning uh, in the total reportable positions while the one that grow grow the most it was the non-commercial one the non-commercial one with 76 percent let's check so that was in January. Yeah, we are standing. This is against US dollar. Over here we have just uh, Bitcoin, okay? So what that means, so is what we see over here is the vice versa of what we are seeing in our chart because in our chart is against US dollar. So the fact over here that we have a lot of short interest for um, Bitcoin, that means that the overall, there is an overall um, uh, pressure on Bitcoin, okay? An overall pressure. So, so that, that implies that this ceiling that we are seeing for uh, more than eight months now is not ready to be is not the, the asset is not ready to break this ceiling higher because according to our cot there is a lot of selling pressure still on so that could trigger our attention to a, a near-term correction lower so and indeed, in the final, in the um, uh, last uh, two weeks of January, we have seen this correction lower, and right now we are seeing again this correction lower. So that report, even though it suggests that there is an overall, um, um, since it presents that there is an overall interest, increased interest in the short uh, for a short position, the fact that the chart. Uh, is failing to break that eight months resistance implies uh, in combination with the COT report that we might continue seeing some swings lower, some correction lowers because there is not a significant interest in order to, for the time being, to break that um, uh, resistance 
uh, for Bitcoin. Okay. Um, just need to open this aggregate show position only format. You have check currency like and see indeed. Uh, yes. Okay. So let's move on. Shall we do another one? Let's see. Let's do pound. Let me check. I, I clarify, guys. You need to see a significant. I mean, if it's 1990, no, it doesn't work. It just suggests another neutral or consolidation mode outlook um, in the medium term. Okay. Uh, let's check. British pounds. Yen. Let's see, yen. Dollar yen. Mm -hmm. On commercial, commercial, 31, 55, 12, 80 for the euro. So it's more than this euro dollar. Let's check euro dollar. Euro, 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 euro. Sorry. Euro, British pound, Brazilian. Uh, the change of interest, 44%, 39%, 65%. Oh, okay. New Zealand. Let's check new Kiwi together. Here we are. We have seen that since the... so. We had a swing higher in January and then on the 27th, or no, actually, yes, a swing higher in January and currently is in a downtrend. But let's check what happened back in January. So our January report as of 31st for Kiwi, it presented a it presented so the the total is 86 against 87 percentage wise but literally a big big um uh, change the last week uh for long position if they have grow the short position also grow but it was the, the long one was three times more well change from 26 so we have growing the long position for non-commercial but a significant detection from the commercial ones decrease in shorts for non-commercial and increase in shorts for commercial so there is a deviation over here there is an uncertainty there is a huge uncertainty not reported positions also grew the short the short one grow uh, da, 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 da. 20 percent 44 20 percent 39 65 so there was again an indecision let me check the disaggregate one the disaggregate one New Zealand, New Zealand disaggregate one. So non-commercial, commercial, as of 31st. Okay, okay, am I just checking the same thing? New Zealand, changes in the dealers, higher, long, 
your short, long, short, long, short leverage, pam, 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 percentage. So the majority of the market participants are actually over here. So changes in short, long. So 14%, 25%, 31%, 24%. 37% is Not refundables. So are there is okay. The total change is a hundred for them is thirty-four. So there is a growing um interest for a uh, short position in Kiwi. As you can see, there is a lot of change in the long positions. Can you see? So, detected by 2K while short increased by 2K. And there was an increase in long, but a significant detection short for asset managers, while the leverage was significantly high once again in the long position. So grow, grow in leverage funds and asset management, grow in other reportables. And the only one that went against the, the long scenario is the dealer's intermediate. And that explains the interest that we are seeing growing in January. Okay. Let's get back, so guys, because this is taking too long. What else uh, remains to be covered? Um, so you need to check the ones that we have seen is just for January. You need to check the weekly ones in order to uh, spot any um, uh, weekly changes and in order to apply this to your uh, strategy positions. I mean, uh, because this is a long, this is a long term. Um, um, uh, a long-term report. You, in order for you to uh, benefit from the report, you need to use the weekly updates from CFTC. Okay, not the monthly ones. The monthly ones are for long-term traders. Um, uh, uh, and the and strategy positions, which can be analyzed due to. Um, uh, due to the um, um, to the long view that they have, um, let me check whether I have I have I have forgot anything. Have in mind, yes, this is very very important. Have in mind that uh, we we mentioned we um, I explained earlier what is the non-commercial and commercial, but I didn't really clarify that that you need to have in mind that the non-commercial traders are usually price speculators and trade in the direction of the anticipated price movement. Okay, while commercial are usually in the market to log in gains that rather than hedge risk. So they tend to place trades in a direction opposite to the expected price direction. That's why in some of the ones that we have analyzed together, we have seen a contraction between commercial and non-commercial and long and short positions. So we have seen, for example, uh, for example, for example, um, okay, we have, uh, where is it? We have a Kiwi over here, okay? And we have, uh, we have said that, oops, sorry. We have seen that there is a significant uh, change in the commercials, a general change in the commitment, the last, the final days of uh, January for the commercial long ones. So we have seen a de significant detection. This is because this is this means that the long traders they have locked uh, gains. Okay. Okay. Well, no, no. I want to get back. Okay. 
This detection in, in commercial long position means that they were, uh, the ones that they were in a long position, they were like uh, long so far, they have lost some gains, so they close their positions. That's why, why we have seen the, this detection in the long commercial positions, even though we still see some increase in the short positions in be because they have a lot gains, okay? Uh, and that's, that they have long, they, they have locked their existing uh, long position, okay? Uh, while uh, they are, um, uh, while the non-commercial ones, they are on the side of a, still, they are on the side of a long position because we have seen a significant in increase in the changing commitment commitment for non-commercial long, which means that the, uh, the non-commercial traders are keep uh, speculating for a higher uh, uh, price in the near term. So they are trading the direction, they are trading to the upside direction still. While commercial, they are, they were, long, but they have closed positions. Uh, some of them, can, the, the, the majority of them have closed their long position in order to log gains. Okay, so um, that's why, um, um, so that comes in line with this swing higher that we have seen for in January. Now, the non-reportable traders are contrarian traders taking positions against both of these categories okay so what what you need to take care about the non reportable uh, traders is to uh, check the net position so the net position is 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 do i have it somewhere No, I don't have the net position of uh, non-reportable um, uh, positions, but okay, I could do the months and just see that the the change is just less than one percent. It's just uh, not point eight percent, and if I had to find the net, it would be around eight hundred. Uh, 800, so yeah, not even 800, so it's 400, 400, okay, the net is 400 only out of nine uh, 9,000. So there is not a significant um, uh, net uh, position for non-reportable traders, but if we had a, a significant net position, uh, significantly high net position, we can we could uh, judge the market sentiment. But in this case, the, the market sentiment was coming was uh, on the same side as long position uh, for the current uh, sentiment, the current sentiment of the Kiwi. While the fact that the commercial um, uh, lock profit and um, the, the the twice the size. I mean, double uh, a double number has locked their they close they close their existing long position in compare with the short ones. It suggests that there might be uh, uh, the, the the uptrend might run out of steam, okay? Because there was double of the uh, commercial market participants uh, close their positions in compare with the. Uh, ones that they are they are hold, they were held in their short positions. So, and still the total of non-commercial and commercial, we could see that uh, there was more. There were more short positions reported short positions than a uh, long position. Not a big difference, a very very tiny difference, but it's still uh, the difference still there. There, so we could claim that we had some near term. Uh, the signal out of this report is that we might see some further swing higher in the near term. However, the sentiment, the overall sentiment uh, is presenting uh, uh, further selling bias. So that means that the current uh, and the near term 
long um, tra long um, tra uh, the, the, uh, trend might um, run out of steam and we might see soonish a new trend to the downside if we consider that the majority of the market participants are in a short uh, position. So you see, it's not clear, it's not always easy. So you need to take one by one, you need to um, uh, try to explain those numbers. Uh, how how many uh, commercial traders have their locked their trades, their closed their trades? How many they still have their positions open? How many of the non-commercial are still speculating a higher or lower prices? Are they more than the ones that they are speculating uh, lower prices? What the net reporting uh, position is telling us for the non-reportable traders? Uh, is the net short? Is the net long? If the net of all the market participants, both non-commercial and commercial, is negative, the net short is negative, that indicates overall bearish sentiment. If the net long is positive, that indicates an overall uh, bullish sentiment. So it's like the, the, the one that we have just seen in the Kiwi example. The net, oh, sorry, the net, um, both the net long and short were uh, positive, okay? But, um, but the, the net long was, uh, sorry, where is it? Yes, both the uh, net, um, the, both the total long and short were positive, but there was a biggest increase, a higher uh, number in the short scenario. So the net uh, short is negative, indicating bearish sentiment, okay? Okay. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it, I think. Let's move on. And actually, one more thing before we call it a date. I have put all this, um, uh, the theory of it, of, of it is in the PDF version. So we might didn't went through the, the slides one by one, but we have seen everything in practice. Okay, so everything that we covered today is on the slide, but we I tried to do it in practice. I tried to show you charts with a COT reports together. What we have seen is uh, we have used um, uh, the COT reports from January, but obviously if you're gonna do that, you need to uh, monitor every Friday the weekly report posted and published every um, every Friday night uh, by the CFTC. Um, uh, try to separate the open contracts with the not closed one. Remember, commercials, uh, uh, um, if we have a change in the commercial, that means that they have closed positions. We have a negative um, outcome. Uh, in the commercial part, because they are locking positions, they have closed positions. Um, if we we need to always always check interest, the open interest, because the open interest guys is to help us track money flow. I mean, whether they are moving from um, uh, one direction to the other, from long to short, and etc. So, if we are seeing the open interest increasing, okay, that's a bullish. Uh, signal because it suggests that elevated interest is pushing the price higher. If the pro if the open interest is detecting, then that indicates an overall bearish outlook or an upcoming downtrend which might not started yet. So this is the outcome. This is what. Uh, this is what you should stick on your, like in a note uh, in front of you in order to help you interpret the report, to check the open interest, to check the price action in your charts in order to find out whether we have a strengthening trend or a weakening trend, okay?
here is a more in detail table. Increasing price with an increasing open interest that suggests further uh, bullish bias. Decreasing price with an increased interest that suggests a strong bearish bias. If the price is increasing but open interest is detecting, that suggests that the existing uptrend might run out of steam. And we have seen an example like that in Kiwi. Kiwi price was increasing, but the interest was detecting. So that indicated that in the near future, we might see the existing uptrend running out of steam or even reverse to the downside. And this is what actually happened in February. Kiwi uh, was seen in a downtrend. So the interest was uh, seen detecting while the price was moving higher. So the, we have the alert. If you were uh, monitoring the um, Kiwi, uh, uh, the 30, you had to actually tried to check and read the report uh, for January, you will have spot this kind of situation. Increasing price, but uh, the report in the, um, uh, in the open interest, uh, the open interest presenting a detection. Uh, if we have a detection in price, but a, a detection also in interest, in the price interest, that means that there is a weakening bear market. So that suggests that we might see either consolidating a bit, or we might see sooner or later a new uptrend uh, starting. Um, so it's also an alert or a sign that you might need to consider exiting your existing positions, by the way. Uh, okay, as I'm gonna call it a date, everything is on the slide, so keep an eye on it. Um, uh, sometimes we might see in the news feed also uh, see a commitment of traders um, breakdown, so in a weekly position, in the, the weekly uh, positioning of the data. Um, and it's in the calendar as well, CFTC net positions. In the calendar, you will be able to see only the net positions, not the exact breakdown. Uh, what else, what else, what else? This is uh, just, this is a three year trend again. Uh, presented the same things that we have seen in reports, but in a visual, uh, um, in a chart, okay? It's the same things as the COT reports, the ones that we are seeing, but in a visual, uh, in a chart, plotted in a chart. Um, what I want for you is to, is to stick on this particular, uh, let me just go back, this slide, and this slide. As long as you understand these two and comprehend these two slides, along with how you should read the dis uh, disaggregate report and the uh, legacy report, you will be just fine. Okay. So that's it from us, guys. Uh, I will end it. I uh, will call it a date. Oh shit! I didn't realize. Sorry. I didn't realize that it lasted for so long. It's a very difficult task. It's, it's something that you should. Um, be very careful about. It's not easy to read the reports. So try, if you if you don't understand, come to me, let me know. Tell me, Andre, I have checked this and this and this and this. It doesn't make sense. Help me and I will do my best, okay? I will call it a date for today. Uh, thank you very much for attending. If you have any further questions, please send me an email at webinars at And I will get back to you as soon as possible, okay? Thank you very much and see you again tomorrow with a live analysis. It's not easy, it's not easy, Joseph. That's why it took me two hours today. Um, I don't know how I could simplify this task, but I will try to find a way eventually. Thank you very much. Have a great day ahead and see you again tomorrow with a live analysis with Stuart uh, in Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, in general to all our social media. You can ask on that one anything you want. Uh, by the way, we might repeat this topic and I will try to do it in a more in detail or more or only examples 
live examples so, so we can have a better understanding maybe i will add it into the into the into the list for um next month's maybe next month's webinar okay thank you guys have a great day ahead and see you again next time bye bye